8 o'clock. Let me take a look and see uh, if I've got any wiggle room tonight. Just a moment. Okay. Um, actually, sorry. He's right here. Here, he's right here. It's hey, hey, this is Arnold. Listen, I will be in the area tonight around 8 o'clock, and we're looking to see if we got the table for three. I mean, if you can have any wiggle room, it would be absolutely fantastic. Sure, sure. We can put you down for 8 o'clock. You said for three? Yes. Eight. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon, right? Hasta la vista. All righty. All righty, bye-bye. All right, thank you. I cannot wait. <laughs> and I will say, if I get diarrhea at this restaurant, I will not be back. All right? <laughs> Yes, hello, and welcome back to the Pop-Up with Paul and Friends, or welcome for the first time if this is your first episode. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to this one. You can go back and listen to episodes we had. You can subscribe and listen to episodes in the future. I'm just an interviewer who loves talking with people, and the cool thing about putting this show out is the universe has rewarded things back just by me doing the show. For example, my good buddy Jason Katz sounds like a, a guy I met, you know, showbiz guy. Hey, I got my guy Jason Katz. Hey, you know, there's a guy over here. My good buddy connected me with my guest today. And here's the thing about this guest. I've known of him and his work for years. He's an incredible voice actor. He does amazing impressions all over the internet. I had seen his work go viral, and I knew of his clips from the Vine days, from YouTube, from social media, but I never knew him personally. So what you just saw and heard is us pranking a really fancy restaurant in Los Angeles. That was a true, genuine prank. You're going to hear in a little bit. And then my buddy sees I'm doing a show, says, hey, I got a guy for your show, and you got a show for the guy and a guy for the go and a go for the girl and a guy. Maybe not all that, but we were able to connect when he was in town, and I brought him over here to my garage, which is a studio, which looks like a living room, for an awesome chat. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only Joe Gaudet. Podcast hopping in LA. Look at you, man. You're fancy. I feel good. You feel good? I feel good about it, yeah. You know what's funny about you, which I didn't realize, because I know you from your voices like most of the internet. Um, your Boston voice to me comes out still, even when you talk. Have All you, the time. But have you been trying to, I've heard you say you try to refine that now because of acting and doing voice work. <clears throat> when, it, when it, like, when they say action, that I can lose it. Yeah, but, but I like you don't. I don't feel phony, but like going back home to Boston, like I have family and like the. I'm from. Mel, I grew up in Melrose, Mass, which okay. is like ten minutes nor north of Boston. North, there it is. But you get closer to the city, it it gets thicker and. Th I have fr You know, my family's in Swampscott. Land. My parents are in Land. My brother is is uh, is in Peabody. Peabody or Peabody. You know, it's like your accent goes in and out. When I'm home, it comes out. When I'm with my kids in Connecticut and my wife. I try to keep a neutral accent because I don't want my kids to have my accent. That's so funny. My best friend has a house in New England, and he's from Jersey. And I keep telling him, I go, your kids are going to sound like Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> ma! Ma! Where are I? Like, my, my, my son will make fun of me all the time. Dad, where'd you park the car, Dad? Because I'm like, where are my khakis? Where'd you guys park? Oh, where's the car? And, I'm, and I go, vehicle. So no, yeah. there's no R's in vehicle. <laughs> so I'll just say, who's the vehicle? I like the Boston accent, maybe because I'm from the Northeast. I feel like it's an endearing accent. I also feel like it you is. can't mess with people from where you're from in a way. Like, no, people are really honest. It's, but it's like, it's, it's, I'm gonna sound like a jerk for saying this. I dated most of the girls I dated, or every girl I ever dated before my wife, Boston accent. Ne relationships never ended well. I'm like in your head, I'm like I just can't stand the Boston accent on women. Right, right. And it's not, it's you know, it's not a dig at any women from Boston. But my mother has a Boston accent. My sister has a Boston. I'm like, I want to get away from it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just because then the 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 it's it's pretty it's <laughs> Boston accent again. It's pretty hardcore when yeah. you're arguing with somebody with a Boston. I'm like, okay, relax, relax. So my wife, neutral Connecticut accent. Nice. She's really educated. I feel like a more. I have a high school diploma. Right. She's got all these degrees. I'm like, oh, this is gonna work well. I like that. That was the prerequisite. Once you start dating her, you're like, oh, there's no Boston accent. This could work. That's exactly. This might she's work. She's Polish. Your family's from Poland. She speaks fluent. <laughs> I'm like, well, she speaks one more language than I do. I, I barely even know English. That's funny. My wife's Polish and Italian. That's a mix. That's a mix right That's there. Good yeah, yeah. Good food. Um, I love everything you do on the internet, man. I, I know you talk about it a lot. I'm sure you're a professional voice actor. Yeah, one of the biggest voice impressionists online, and I feel like you've been doing it forever. Like when I, I I've known of you, I haven't known you personally, but I've known of your work for so many years. Yeah. What was the first platform for you? Like, were you? Because you, I feel like you've been doing. I want to say MySpace, but not like. It wasn't really performing. I, I did like sketches, like little stupid sketches. But then, I, you know, then Vine became mm -hmm. popular. And that's when I still had like a nine to five job, 
and I was just doing what you had six seconds to be funny. So you really, really quick. And that took off. And then after that, it was, what was, what was after Vine? Just kind of YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. You try to do that. And then TikTok, things really started to gain traction. Uh, like social media wise, like I always had like an acting and a, and a voice acting career, mm-hmm. but not like people knew about me. But it's social media; it helps you, you know, get the word about your stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think I think TikTok really kind of like okay, now you can get millions of followers on this. Now there's a lot of eyes on you. Now you can kind of keep doing the you know the sketches and the. It must the be nice too because you already had that core business, and then you're like yeah. doing big on TikTok. It must be kind it of be a, a cycle. Right? It was yeah. almost like a funnel because like I always think okay. People are on the toilet watching these videos. <laughs> yeah, we swipe. Oh, that's fun. You know, that gets you interested. Oh, let me click on this guy's website. Oh, he, he's a professional. He is a professional voice actor. Mm-hmm. And then that's happened. A lot of studios like Showtime is is coming to me. Uh, Apple TV. Uh, you know, big clients, small clients, and they they see that this guy he does voices. He records a lot of his videos in his recording studio. What's his website? Oh, the link's in the bio. Let's go to that. Oh, he has his own studio. Mm. His, well, okay, this is his agent's info. This is his, his uh, you know, contact information. How can I work with him? And then it's using, using that social media, all the impressions, all the funny stuff mm. to just kind of get business. As selfish as it is, you got to have a plan. I can't just sit there and just do videos and try to rely on right, that right. for work. You have the dream job, though. You're home. You work from yeah. home. You get to get the work come in. Do you have, like, three locks that the kids can't get in? I do. No, like... I, they don't know that I change the password all the time. I get the big like security like dee, 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 dee. it's only like five digits, but you can keep pushing and make mm-hmm. it sound like so I'm going like this to the kids like uh, <laughs> and they can get in. They can't get in uh, unless I'm there, uh, and it's great. The security cameras all over, so I don't because I, I spend so much money on the studio. I don't want anybody. You have to it. yeah, locked in. Yeah, yeah. What was your first voice acting job? I think like the first big bigger job that I got was it was on a show called PBS. Shout out to Evan Sussman and Dave Schlafman. They gave me like my first big break of like, it's a PBS show. They pitched it to PBS. It got picked up. And I was just like little bit characters on there. It was called Fizzy's Lunch Lab. Mm. And I was bit characters. I was a wrapping jar of peanut butter. I was this, I was this, uh, you know, candy, piece of candy. And it taught kids about how to eat and eat healthy and stuff. And then the lead guy, Larry Murphy, voiced Fizzy. He went on to do Bob's Burgers. He's Teddy and Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. And they knew that I could voice match. So I, you know, did a bunch of auditions and I voice matched the main character and then I got the main character and nobody knew they had recast it because I voiced, you know, Damn. I doubled. and that made me proud because I'm like, I, you know, Larry Murphy did such a great job. I want to make sure I nail this. And then we got it. It was nominated for Emmys and I was like, I was proud of all that Damn. stuff. And then one thing led to another. You realize, oh, I can get paid for this. This is, all right, this is a little bit step further where I want to go in my career. What else can I do? And then it came down to I have to like market myself, mm-hmm. and not just go. Oh, I hope work comes. So that's when I kind of started learning the business of, of you know, how to get work. Sure, you know the voice matching thing is wild. I was just talking about this with Daryl Hammond about the idea of like you basically scientifically make the same sound, right? Like you could you could put yeah. it on a what's the device? He's, I can't remember the name. Like a sonar, like it's the same exact sound. Yeah. Because and I noticed that I'll have like the it's called the reference track. If anybody doesn't know who's in the industry, like if I need to listen to like okay, I need to double Arnold for this. All right, I got to hear Arnold's voice. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Okay, you see him say that. Okay, I I I I think and you have to. I'm literally sitting there. How can I match the tone so that when I record, can I match up those wavelengths in that in the recording software? Does it match? Okay, now I have the tone. Now we have to do the performance. Then we have to do the cadence. So it, it, you become obsessive. And the only reason I become obsessive is because in those situations, if you're voice doubling, you need to get in there and get out without anybody knowing. If you did your job right. well, you, you got to know that, okay, I th- just thought that was Arnold or I thought this was Christian Bale or Ryan Reynolds or you know whatever, whoever you voice and, doubling. And have you done a lot of those that you can share? Do you sign NDAs and you can't tell me? I've done... I've done a lot that I can't. I, I I did double for Christian Bale for uh, Batman. It was it was either the Dark Knight or Batman Begins uh, slot machine games and all the casinos. <laughs> he wasn't available, <laughs> and I'm like, he, what do you mean he's not? He's doing a movie, and they were like, you know, we'll pay you X amount. I'm like, well, that's I'll it's like nothing. You're gonna I'll, avoid, I'll do it. I want that. My, and I'll do it. So it's like, you know, um, Player One, you're playing Batman Begins, you know, and saying all this, and it's like. You go in like for two or three hour session, your voice is just getting red raw. I'm like, no, nah, it's worth it because then I can use it as a resume builder and stuff like that. <laughs> so that was fun. 
Um, but what does Batman sound like unclogging a toilet? <laughs> Bruce Wayne or Batman? Batman. <laughs> 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 it's a septic tank. You're not supposed to flush. Stop. He's getting <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, because I have septic. The only reason I say it, you can't flush those people. If you have septic, do not flush those dude wipes down there. Don't. The, that stuff will get clogged, especially when it's raining like this in LA too. If you have, se- do they have septic around here? Probably. I not. think so. Maybe in yeah. the hills. Maybe I think they do. I can't do it. They do. I, I'm so inspired by you, what you do. I want to do impressions just by hanging out with you because like it's so cool. But it's such an art form. Like voice matching is not it something is. you can learn i don't think like you're, you're i you're... think i don't know i think i think you can um a lot of the thing is it's not like impressions anybody can do impressions the voice matching is that's niche and that's a tough thing but anybody can like try to sound like you know a crappy version of something and have yeah. fun with it i saw that clip you did with ryan reynolds where you say you're under a lot of pressure that was fun has that happened to you a lot where you get to kind of meet everybody no and... the only so like that one I did with Ryan came for, we worked on a project. That was one I can't say what it was. It, it hasn't been released. And I, I, I have an inkling. I'm just going, maybe my performance was so bad with him, they're just not going to really, you know, <laughs> then you get paranoid, like, maybe my confidence is, but who knows? Maybe they're Hey, man, don't get paranoid. The check clears. Do you no, have to be and that's all I cared about. But like working <laughs> with him, he was the coolest to work with. He was just laid back. Yeah. He was just cool. He's exactly who you think he is, but nicer. Wasn't a jerk to anybody on set. I, I, I would love to work with him again. Cool. Um, but yeah, those TikTok videos were fun. We just like, we rapped and he's like, you want to do some like funny TikToks for my, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. But then doing the deep fakes, people thought I deep faked him. him. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's, that's Ryan. That's not, you know, that's not me deep faking something. Cause you're here. Could you slip in a little Ryan Reynolds? Cause I love it. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> What do you say? I always say slap my ass and call me Betty White. That's like how I always get into, well, slap my ass and call me Betty White. Hmm? And then it's always the, hmm? What did you say? <laughs> That's so good. But for Your the Arnold deepfakes, is... they are fun to do because I get to go to my to my comedy partner, Brian Monarch. Uh, we can, like, he's like, well, what do you want to do? Well, let's do Arnold in, you know, uh, Titanic. Let's do Arnold as Uncle Rico in Napoleon. And that's fun for me to do because then, okay, that would be fun. Because they're so realistic, we can go into them and then put them in any scenario. But then if I go, all right, let's put so-and-so in something, he's like, but I, I, it's not... Because people think the deep fake stuff is just AI and it's instant. Mm. It's not. You literally have to take thousands and thousands of photos by yourself, find scenes from a movie, get it, put it in a data set, and thousands of every different angle of that they mor- actor. They morph and together. And then, and it takes about a, a week, a week and a half for the computer just running all day, every day, to render that stuff. And then we can go into post-production and do the voiceover to that. That The stuff you do with that is why, is really like the future, though. Like it, It's crazy. I know there's also the guy who does Tom Cruise on TikTok. I don't know if you know him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He He's incredible, too. What do you think about deep faking, like, can you get perks of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, can you become Arnold on the internet? Like, there's, can I, you do? Uh, there's uh, a lot of legalities. I know Miles there? does. Yeah, Miles. I believe it's Miles Fisher. He does. Um, yeah, he's he's the uh, deep Tom Cruise in Metaphysic. They all work together. Metaphysic AI is the is the deepfake company that they work with. Which those guys are brilliant. And uh, you can if I think as long as it's parody. That's fine. That's then illegal. You, then you get into the legalities of like, you know, you can't go, I could not make a deep fake and make it realistic and then post this on the internet for like, you know, for financial gain or commercial purposes. Hi, this is Arnold and I'm here to sell stogies. <laughs> I mean, these stogies are fantastic, right? And if you don't buy them, I'll be back. And like, you yeah. can't get away with that. <laughs> if you Now, if you do it as a parody and like, you, you clearly say <laughs> it's a deep fake, it's not, and you don't, you know, you're not trying to get any malicious stuff out of that. That's fine. But it, it's a slippery slope because yeah, it's crazy. Me and Brian and all those guys, we do it for entertainment. Right. We're not going to do it for like political or propaganda. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it will be used in the future. Somebody gets their hands on it, and especially with the with the AI voice stuff that you. It, yeah. But you need a huge data set of that voice. You can't just have me talking for like a minute and then build something off of that. It's hours upon hours yeah. upon, and that's why a lot of people who who do that uh, the deep AI stuff. Joe Rogan, they've done it for Joe Rogan a lot. And it's because he has so many hours upon hours of his podcast, they can make him say whatever. Right. You know, and, and hopefully people don't, you know, use that for malicious intent. I'm sure they will. Yeah, I'm but. not saying you're going to... I'm not a mean-spirited person, but there is a lot of power that comes with the deep fake stuff. Like, if you wanted to, you could just 
get Arnold canceled. You you could in a heartbeat. You, yeah, you could in, easily in, just say the wrong thing. But I w- but I, you I wouldn't could. do it. But I'm could. saying it's crazy because I've had poli- I've I've called people that he knows and they think it's Arnold, <laughs> and it's like that's fun. And then you you let him in. Oh, that's just not Arnold. That's just some idiot from Boston doing these yeah, stupid, yeah. You know, prank calls. But um, yeah, and like I take pride in that. But at the same time, like at the end of the day. I don't take it's a friggin' Arnold Schwarzenegger in press. Like yeah, to me, yeah. I go, it's what, what do you it's we're not curing cancer here. Yeah, we're yeah. You're some. you're making fun videos, which yeah. is the way you should look at yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I just think the technology is advancing in a way that is borderline trippy. Like I, that Tom Cruise guy for the first few clips, uh, even you, and yours as well. I'm like, this is the really them. Unreal. It's unreal. not it's real. It yeah. seems real. Um how are you regionally? Because we're talking about Boston accents. Like, can you do a lot of America with your voice? I mean, I can do like a, just a, a neutral accent. I mean, you can, if, if it's caricature, I can do it. Yeah. You know, like you need to do a southern accent and start talking like this, man. I'm like, but then you go, okay, I'm just gonna do a crappy Sam Elliott. I'm gonna do, you know, <laughs> what's up, dude? How you doing, dude? Like, you can go into that. I'm okay. I'm pretty just from doing commercial after commercial. You just have to have a neutral accent. You can, you know, sometimes they go, oh, we need a Boston. Oh, that's fine. I don't have to think. Uh-huh. I can re- as long as I'm reading something phonetically. I can. I can get around. What What would you say is the weirdest job? Like, has there been a, a regional or a character where you go, this is a, the weirdest challenge of a voice I've ever had to do? There's been a weird job. I won't say the celebrity, but I was <laughs> hired. And these people had a lot of pull, and I was like, I don't want to piss these people off because yeah. I did not want to mess with them. For some, I don't know how they got access to my bank account, but they found my bank account number, and they already gave me the money into that account. And it was a lot of money. I couldn't turn it down. And I had to give a eulogy at a very famous person's funeral as this other celebrity because that celebrity just wasn't available or for whatever. What? It was very strange. This was oh, years ago. And not deep fake, just an audio. Just my voice <laughs> at a eulogy memorial service. What? Talking about the kids he leaves behind and all. And I'm going... This is really weird. Listen, the stereotypes you hear about Hollywood, that just is, it's all true. Like, uh, sorry, uh, I'm on a movie. I can't make the funeral. But my kids got to play a, a lot of sports in, in summer camps that summer because <laughs> I was like, well, we need the money. That's so funny. That, that's a good answer for the weirdest job. It was dude. very that's strange. That's trippy. It was ve- I went, okay, I can't, I can't turn. Okay. It's yeah. also like that celebrity wanting to show face, I guess, or show voice. I, yeah, and that was very strange. <laughs> and that was that was a voice nobody knows I do. So this is, I won't say. And was, and here it is for the first time anywhere. <laughs> we're gonna get so many comments. It was me. It was no, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> so you it was start- Betty White. No, no, it was just it wasn't Betty. That'd be White. amazing. No. Do you do women? No, I I in post production we can. Like there's a lot of tricks. I used to do like a crappy Betty White, but it was just like a high, you know, still oh oh hello, it's me, buddy, you know. But it's crappy. Yeah. But I learned that if I do, and it's such a uh, it's so random, but David Archuleta. Do you know David? He yeah, was, American Idol, American right? Idol. Yeah. Hi, this is David Archuleta. Gosh, if I started talking like this... So I get rid of all the bass and the timbre in my voice. If you pitch it up in post-production, it sounds very feminine and very... So we've gotten away with that for animated series and mm-hmm. stuff. And like, you have to do a female... Just because nobody's available. And frankly, a lot of productions want to save money. They don't want to hire multiple people. Mm-hmm. So you do three voices for this project and like we don't have to pay you anymore. You got, you're, you're scheduled to do two voices. Can you do a third voice, female? I'm like, all right. And then you figure it out. Yeah. But that's like the only... like close to i've gotten doing like female voices that's crazy why don't we make you female just for the next answer with that voice i'll pitch it up and post okay so, so how is the? i know it's rainy here how was your day getting over here well you know it's very rainy um flash flood warnings until 10 p.m tomorrow or tonight <laughs> still on east coast time um i saw a branch on the road i swerved around it and then i parked across from the studio so um better watch out when i leave here because i have insurance on the rental but i don't think they're gonna cover mother nature i'm attracted <laughs> Attracted, and we're gonna pitch it up. It's gonna sound amazing. I can't wait to hear what that sounds like. It's for me. I'm not an impressionist. I'm not a good voice guy, but I try. I like goofily with stand up, do things here and there. Yeah, and I find I need phrases to kick in. Yeah, yeah. To like, if I say for folk's sake, I could do th- ten seconds of Irish. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, for folk's sake, out of Irish, and you get that phrase. I, but I, without you. saying that, I can't. You get can't. Into I'm it. the same way with a lot of like Arnold. If I haven't done it in a long time, I need to listen to clips, and I go, well, first of all. I will listen first of all, and then that gets into You're that. In. Michael J. Fox. I always go into like, ah, uh, uh, wait a second, Doc. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Like, and you go into that, yeah. and then I go, okay, he's up here. Ah, uh, no, it's fine, great. And then you, you got to hold that 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 vocal fry in the bit. So you, there's a lot of stuff you go in. Ryan Reynolds is 
slap my ass and call me Betty White. <laughs> um, Ice T is yo, what up, man? Yo, what up, man? How's it going? You know, I go into that. But yeah, there's a lot of phrases I have to do. You don't it's, think about it, but now that you ask, it, you go, oh yeah, it's little tricks. I know, I find that too. It's fun to watch other people do impressions, and it's like it's sometimes easier. Or you'll see a lot of people; they might have a large following, and you're going, "Well, that's cool," but they're just doing an impression of somebody else's impression. Yep. Like everybody who grew up on SNL would probably do. Dana Carvey's impression of whoever they're doing, right. like Daryl Hammond's impression of anybody, like you, you have those like those just 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 icons in that in that world of voices and impressions. You find a lot of people do impressions of somebody else doing an impression. I feel like that's what happened with Trump. Like Trump started getting impersonated so much, and then eventually it was like people were doing him yeah. as an impression of him. Yep. Also in culture, we remember. I, I said this to Daryl. We remember the impressions more sometimes than the person. They stick yeah. more. Yeah. And he was explaining, which I think is interesting with comedy. It's a caricature when it's comedic. And it sticks more because of the comedy. It's like a cartoon version of the real person. And that's when it's fun when you see it on... Like, the voice is cool, but if you don't have material behind it... Right, exactly. I would much rather have, you know, a 5 out of 10 voice and just hilarious comedy. Yeah. And writing. Because that's that's what makes it. Unless you have to voice... Ma- and that's why it's, like, tough for me... Why I don't go after a ton of voices because I'm like, if it can't be a ten out of ten, I'm not gonna do well, it. Well, you sort of do both. You get to work professionally and do the yeah, voice match right. and do the comedy videos. Yeah. Do you get on stage ever? I used to do open mics back in the day, but it was like right at the time my voice over career was like really taken off. And then I heard something Rogan said on a podcast, uh, and he, he had mentioned that like if you're not gonna go full on with something, especially stand-up comedy. Yeah. There's so many people who want to get into this. And if you're taking stage time and not really... And I was like, wow, because I had done that years before I heard him. And I was like, okay, so my my gut told me the right thing. I didn't want to take stage time away from people who really wanted it. Mm-hmm. And I always went up and I dicked around doing doing just impressions. I always went up as this like personal assistant to the stars. They had like a fake name. Mm-hmm. And then I would go <laughs> in and then it was just easier. You know, I used to work for Arnold... And um, we were on set one day, and he, Arnold comes over to me and says, Hey, listen, Craig, let me ask you something, all right? I am, why well, want to smoke a stogie? And, and then you could go into it. Right. And to me, it was just like a, it, it felt hacky to me because I was using like a high pitched voice to go into a low pitched voice. So something totally different from the impression I was going to yeah. do. And then it was like, a, it was like almost like, a, like a, an audio magic trick. And I just, I felt hacky, and my material it was, wasn't good. I used to do bits on, on Ice T as Doc Brown and stupid, like <laughs> you know, and 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 you know, twi- you know, I used to do like a Bill Paxton from Twisted Two. Nice. And it was just like it was very hacky, and I'm just like, then voiceover took off, and I, I just said, all right, I'm I'm just I want to go all in on this. Sure. And well, not I, juggle a bunch of stuff. It's funny in the business side of it too, because like it's great to have a day job when you're if you're doing stand up comedy, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. great to be making a living. So you made the right move. I would argue though, if you went back up as yourself. And did your voices, you would do great. It would be fun, but I don't know, man. I, I, and it's not an ego thing, but like I really struggle, especially on social media. I struggle to be taken seriously. But at the end of the day, I always do have to remember most people who watch anybody's content online, especially comedy, they're on the toilet. They're, they're <laughs> sitting next to their, their husband or wife and just scrolling. And they, they just want eye candy and ear candy. I get that. And then I'll do the occasional, like, hey, here's a commercial I voice. There. And then you notice, like, Nobody comments on that. Yes. But then you can't get in your head because I don't do it for views. But you have an idea. You think it's going to blow up. Yeah. Nobody likes it. No. Or you do something. Like we did something. It was um, the deep fake thing we put. Yeah, the Arnold on Uncle Rico. I did it in five minutes. I did the voiceover and I just sent it to my buddy Brian and then he posted it after it got rendered. And it blew up. Mm. And we never thought that was good. So you just, you don't know. But I, I you know, I don't, I just don't have the time yeah. to do stand up. I love it. I just yeah. went. I went to the improv last night and watched it. Oh, nice! It was great. And like, I love. I'm a fan of just calm. I love watching people yeah. and laughing, and then seeing their. You know, everybody on that lineup last night was so different. Yeah, so d- different backgrounds, different genders, and they were all funny. And that's what I like most about stand up is it doesn't matter who you are. If you have, if you're genuine and you're telling your truth, it's funny. And everybody just everybody's there to laugh. Nobody's there to judge like it's a, like it's a book. Book report, right? You're doing it's the, it the best. class, yeah. It's you the know, best and that's what I love good. most about stand up. Like, yeah, well, just... Boston's a great comedy town too. Yeah. I feel like I love Boston comics, and also just like the blue collar nature of Boston. I think makes you uh, a better comedian because making people in Boston laugh is not it's easy. Not, no, I feel it's, like it's it's hard. 
And so that's a good comedy town. You also like that's why you like you see people like Bill Burr, like he just he grew up. You know, I'm pretty sure he grew up in Quincy, Mass. He grew up, I mean, he grew up in, in the Boston area. Yeah. But you have to be on your toes 24 7. You're waiting in line. Somebody's taking too long to order. There's a quick remark. You turn around, do shot. Like, you got to be quick, especially, especially if you got, you know, brothers and sisters or you're the young. I was the young. I mean, I had an identical twin brother. So, mm-hmm. but I was two minutes younger than him. But I was still was the baby of the family. So mm-hmm. you always got to think, all right, I got to be quick on my toes. I got to be quick. That's the only way you can survive, survive in the, especially in the Northeast. Yeah. It's, you got to be quick. I always think about this, about how that kind of makes how you survive, how you operate as a person. Yeah. I'm fairly new to Hollywood, and like I'm like yelling at people at the deli here to like get out of my way because I'm where I'm from. It's, it is a product of where we're from in a way. It's it like is. You, you become this kind of uh, – I don't know if it's animalistic, but there's something about like survival mode. And from- you're not, I don't even think you're doing it to be like mean. You're just – this is what I'm used to. You have to – like driving here, I'm just like, get that. Out of the way, like yeah. But I think it's everywhere you go. It's not an East Coast versus West Coast thing. But I, it, it's it's more on the East Coast that you just people aren't walking around angry. They're just walking around. They got somewhere to go. Yeah, they we got just, things to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. It is definitely more laid back here in, in a funny way. You haven't really been to L.A. much either, right? It's the second time I've ever been. That's so I'm the honored first, you're here hanging. Well, I'm I'm happy. To How be cool. Here. I genuinely want to meet people like you. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and it's because then you get to learn more about stuff. And yeah, you'll make connections. But it is it's it's fun to just meet new people and just because it's just boring if you're doing the same stuff over and over. Yeah. Like I I literally just sit in my recording studio by myself. I don't talk to anybody face to face. So this is the first time in a long time where I'm like, <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. It's a you're, human. You're I can reach out and I could inappropriately touch it yes. if I wanted to. Only if you do it as Arnold and, and deep fake and we could post it. <laughs> hey. Listen, Paul, bend over the recliner, it rec- very nice leather. I can tell where the leather ends and you begin. So I will absolutely do that. Verbatim what he said to his nanny. Uh, do you, like, does it pop up sometimes in the world or, like, with your family? Did I hear, or like, you did hear, I hear yourself? Myself? Yeah, were you on at the Super Bowl or anything crazy No, I, recently? I did like, a Super Bowl spot last year. Okay. It was, like, the first uh, Super Bowl spot in the metaverse. It was for Miller, Miller nice. Lite. That was so much fun to voice. I got to voice, you know, the main guy in the thing, and then I got to voice like this this uh, Norwalk, Nor, Nor, Norwalk, it's fun, Boston accent, Norwalk coming Norwalk. up. Norwalk. Jumping over this river, and it was just me. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good collaboration. But I hear myself on the radio all the time. And it's not a brag. It's just, I just work in so often yeah. that I go, it's not like, and I feel really crappy for saying this, but it's like I don't get excited about it anymore because I hear it all the time. Yeah, it's like, well, you're But used when to my it. kids hear it, I get really proud. Dad! And I'm like, what happened? What happened? I come running up still. What's the matter? What's the matter? No, 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 you're on the radio. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, pause. And they pause it and <laughs> they play it back. I'm like, that is me. And then see, I can see how happy they are. I go, that makes me happy. Yeah, I don't yeah. care about hearing myself because I hear it when I record it. Yeah, of course. It's like the same thing with the video games. I get so, I do a lot of the voice, uh, not a lot of the voice, I do a lot of voices in the Five Nights at Freddy's games. And people know me from that. And they're like, what was it like this? And you, I'll go to Comic-Cons and they're asking me questions. And I feel so bad. I go, guys, I've never played the games. <laughs> I feel like Denzel. I don't watch my own movies. Right, like, right. It's not because I don't like it. It's just I'm so busy. Yeah, you're doing I'm also thing. a dad. I'm running my own you know, recording yep. studio and voiceover business. I just don't have the time. And that's all it is. Yeah. I love the fans. I love meeting fans at Comic-Cons. They come up. And then the parents who have no idea who I am. And I'm totally okay with that because... I get to see the kids who are excited to meet either me or whoever voices sure. the other stuff. And they and I always talk to the parents. I'm like, you might not get it, but your kids see that you don't get it, but you're here supporting them. That's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, that's Because awesome. it's like, I don't get what my kid likes, but I support what they like. And that's all. That's my favorite thing to see. It's by far my favorite. That's also a great audience. Like the Comic-Con video game world. It's yeah. the big, best fans in the world, I feel like. These are great people, passionate. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many kids do you have? Two. Six nice. and eight. Nice. William's eight. Audrey's six. Uh, she's, uh, she's turned six on Valentine's Day, so that's a good birthday. It's an easy yeah, birthday. Yeah, it's remember. easy. Easy birthday. Remember. I feel like in the creative world, too, it's good. It, I, I relate to the dad stuff, too. It's fun. Like, you know, I do stand-up, yeah. but at the end of the day, if I'm if my daughter's crying laughing at some joke I said, like, that's, it is, there's pretty gratifying, too, besides some dude in the well, front row judging me. Because you funny to your kids. Real, it's like, you know, like, oh, funny. Okay, dad, whatever. Yeah. I'm about to get there. She's five, my oldest, so... She's about she's about to be like, come on, Dad. She's Is she kind sassy, of like, like funny sassy? She, yeah. Does she have your humor? Yeah. She's Perfect. pretty goofy. Perfect. But she also is already like embarrassed by me. Like I'm I'm already embarrassing her. It's like, Dad, stop. Like what? 
Or like my my kids are, I went in, I go in and read to the kids every now. And that's the only place I get nervous. I don't get nervous on stage or like on set or in a record. I always get nervous before, but my hands are shaking when I'm reading books to the kids at because. I, cause I, maybe I care what they think or like, you know, that's the only odd and I'm sitting there scared and shaking. And then after the, my, my, one of my son's, uh, friends comes up, do you voice the puppet master in the prodigy math game? Uh, yeah. How'd you know that? Uh, Will told me my son, he goes, my son, he told me, I go, okay. And then one kid, I don't believe you. And I'm like, I'm not doing the voice for you right now. Dude. <laughs> so I do it. He goes, Nah, man, sounds nothing like. I'm like, well, it is literally me. I'm like, I'm trying to prove something to an eight year old. You like, can't. Yeah. You cannot impress any. Yeah, of those yeah, kids. no. Which is good. It's a good barometer. Uh, yeah. Kids will humble you. Oh, dude, it's, it's you need it. Humble pie is the best dessert around those kids. Yeah, I don't always willingly like eating it, but I'm forced to every day. Yeah. I also have only girls. I'm outnumbered by women. It's That's a part okay. of it too. Two, three, two, two, two girls and and a wife and who's okay. also a woman. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it's twenty twenty. You're right. I, you're right. Well, I do want to do a voice thing with you. Yeah, if you're up whatever, for it. Whatever you want. Uh, but I'm an old school radio fan. I'm an old school prank fan. Yep. I feel like you probably pranked a lot of people. Yeah. Because we, it's Hollywood yeah. and it's so fancy here. Yep. I was gonna ask you if we could call one of the hardest restaurants to get into. You want Arnold to get you in? Ooh. That's fine. So you're his personal assistant. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for calling. This is Kristen. How may I assist you? Hey, Kristen. How are you? Um, I have a very uh, VIP. Uh, my boss is looking for a table tonight. I'm sorry. You said your boss is looking for a table tonight? Yes. For three. Okay. Hey, let me take a look and see uh, if I've got any wiggle room tonight. Just a moment. Okay. They're, they're checking to see if there's any wiggle room. All right. This is great. Yeah, I'll be. It should be a second. Stop! I, I'm on the phone now with them. Um, actually, sorry, he, he's right here. Here, he's right here. It's hey, hey, this is Arnold. Listen, I will be in the area tonight around eight o'clock, and we're looking to see if we got the table for three. I mean, if you can have any wiggle room, it would be absolutely fantastic. Sure, sure, we can put you down for eight o'clock. You said for three? Yes, me, and my son. And his girlfriend. I think it would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you got it. Would you like me to put him under your name? I, if you could use a pseudonym. I don't want anybody that I'll be in the restaurant. You know, you get in the paparazzi all over yeah. here. Yeah. Absolutely. What name would you like me to use? I think we should use Ari, A-R-I, Schwartz. I mean, they will not know. All right. You are all set, then. We'll see you tonight at 8. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon, right? Hasta la vista. All right. All right, thank you. I cannot wait. <laughs> and I will say, if I get diarrhea at this restaurant, I will not be back. All right? Dude, that was incredible. Let me tell you something about Hollywood, by the way. This yeah. is exactly what happens with celebrities. Within a second, let me put you on a brief hold. Holy shit, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and Whatever I would, you want. I, that may or may not be the first time that they've done that. <laughs> I mean, should we call back and say, listen, Arnold's got diarrhea. I cannot come. We should call back. You want to call back? Should we, should I'll, def I'll definitely should be nice about it. You mean later? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I have a soul. We'll definitely call them and tell them. But I also, this is what I mean about the power of your voice. Like, I, I you just heard firsthand what, what, what A list I gets you. I felt back because she was like, yeah, I don't know if we have any wiggle. Just, hey, I would like a tape. And as yeah. soon as you heard, like, you heard her oh, shift. Oh, and then also, she nervously laughed when you said, hasta la vista. <laughs> right. Hasta la vista. I see you soon. Okay. All right, I just, on. this is what's great about your, your voice is like, this woman's gonna, I almost don't wanna call back. Oh, I can, but yeah. I want her to have the story of like, yeah, Arnold, I believe he says hostile. And I feel because I've done that, I, I shut down, excuse me, as I burp up the second round of Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> um, they better send me money for this, it'd be good. Um, no, uh, I shut down the Gucci store in Boston because Ice T was shooting Law and Order. He wasn't, it was me calling up, but like, and they shut down the whole store. I called back an hour later saying schedules have changed because I, in my head, I went, what if they closed the whole store and somebody who had the day off went into the store to visit? What if they got into a car crash? Like, right, I'm, right, yeah. You're, I, you, don't wanna, going, you don't want to carry it. I had such, I think that's when I first had my panic attack, my first panic attack ever. I'm going, oh, what if, I, and I called back and, you know, I, oh. yeah, but prank call, like, it, it's fun to do here. Like, I almost feel, don't feel as bad because, like, you do get such special treatment here for being a celebrity oh, yeah. versus any other city in the world that I think they deserve a little bit of this. Like they, they deserve it in a way. Well, the, the stuff we've been doing these past couple of days, I won't, I can't say what it is, but you hear people's, you hear a lot of people go, don't even care. 
Yeah. Really, or don't believe you and just hang up. It or, reminds me of growing up too. Like there's something, and this is why I love voices in comedy. There's something about that like rebellion a little bit that we should never lose as dads. You can't, I mean, it's fun, like, I remember I used to do them by myself. I didn't even record them. Like back in the day. And then like a few years ago when I started doing fun stuff, because it's like, you, how many videos you see, like, guy does impressions at the drive-thru, and I'm like, I always, like, cringe and roll my eyes, because it's like, I never do it. I did it once, and then I was, I was Arnold at Taco Bell. Hi, I wonder, I have, it's been quite some time since I've had diarrhea, and I thought I'd eat here. And, like, and you just keep on going, and it got, like, a ton of views. But it's like... It, I get bored with that, but when there's other people around and you're making your buddies, it's yeah, way funnier. It's the best. Like seeing you, I'm like, that was fun. That would that lit me up, man. It reminded me of being 17. Like that's what I used to do with my buddies, but was, poorly. <laughs> you did it. You do the voice right. You have know, you have you met him? Never met him. He is aware of me just because he's had a sign off on stuff. I was Otev on Big Brother uh, okay. for for a, a season, and they wanted it. It was a Jack Jellyfish, and they wanted him to sound like Arnold. And I was like, let's do Arnold over the top and regular Arnold. And then the legal goes, all right, let's do that and send it to him. And they, he, him and his team listened to it. And I guess, I guess this is what they tell me. And I always visualize him saying this. Listen, Joe can do the voice, but no catchphrases. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> okay. Thank, you know, it's like, yeah. and that production, they, that crew is amazing. Aware. Yeah. They're just, they know their stuff. It's a lot of fun. That's what's unique about what you do, though, is like, he definitely knows you. I do feel like he'll eventually meet, and then you'll have to do a video with him or something. Which would be fun. But like, I don't, like, I've, I've only ever taken a photo with one celebrity in my life. And I got to work and meet some, Danny Trejo. Like, and they asked He's if cool. I wanted to take, I was like, yeah, I'll take, I was eating yeah. lunch with them. And it's just like, I don't get starstruck. I don't know if I'd want, I, I, I'll just put it this way. I wouldn't bring it up. Arnold, let me do your, your voice to you. Because how many times, like, if they wanted me to, I would. But I just was like, I wouldn't go out of my way to do the yeah. voice to him. If he know? knew who you were, though, I feel like he he would, like, it's a I mean, flattery. That would, be, that, would, that would be like, I could die happy. Go, yeah, but, but right, dude, let's recreate something. Yes, yeah. but the voice matching, it's trippy. Like, just hearing you do it, it's like, it sounds like I'm talking. Like, it's really. Which is great, because I'm like 5'9", 165 pounds. <laughs> but I can pretend like I'm his size. And I'm like, this is good. Uh, we're going to dinner tonight. We're going to dinner with Arnold. It's me, you, and Arnold. We're going to go get the real guy. Like, oh, crap. We have to show up. <laughs> Quick, just give me some makeup. Dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> we, we should actually just show up, and I'll just talk like that. Just me and go, yes, I am here. And they go, wait a second. I've lost a lot of weight. Well, wait, wait, what if we do? What if we do like a weird mask? We could pull this off. Or we do like a weird mask thing, and we get you like a body, like a no, muscular we're just body get Reese's suit. peanut butter cup wrappers. Just put a gap between my teeth. Yeah, yeah. It is me. It's me. I am here. Yeah. Just walk in with a stogie. Is this smoking? I don't know. Kanye wears like all the all. You ever see he wears yes. like the face covering yeah, things? We could do that. You could be like, we could get a big guy and just be like. I'm Arnold now. I, I don't want to. Still COVID mask inside. <laughs> also love that you said Ari. Would you say Ari Schwartz? Ari Schwartz. Nobody will know. <laughs> that's that's the alias we've been using for some stuff. So that's amazing. It's, I'm like because I host like videos um, during the day for my job. Yeah. That the one goal with this show is like I just want to have combos. I don't even. Well, it's so watching all your stuff is so much fun. Like all the celebrities you just hang oh, with. Oh, thanks, like, dude. Hey, dude, it's it's laid back, and I I think what you do it makes them feel at ease. Thank like, you. Just talking to a buddy, not just another press junket. Like, uh, how many questions you get asked? Oh, like, dude. It, that separates you because I've Thanks. been watching this. So I'm like, you should make it easy. Thank you. That, this is the long form of what I do, yeah. but I do still do junkets for NBC and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you go into those rooms and I'm just like, I got five minutes. Like, what's up? Like, I don't. I, and I'm sure they appreciate it because they just literally, what was it like prepping for this role? What was it like prepping for this role? You guys worked together in this previous movie. And yeah, who times, cares? I literally just heard that. Yeah, but you know, actors are weird sometimes where like, the, I, I do get people who take, act, you should take acting seriously, but I'm a goofball. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I love Pierce Brosnan and the other, like, recently when I interviewed him, like, I was just being an idiot. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. said some question about, like, what a fun cast, like, you guys must bro out or yeah, some yeah. dumb yeah, question. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, these are roles. <laughs> these are very serious. I'm like, dude, you're in Black Adam. I'm like, you're not. This you isn't in Shakespeare. Fires, was it Fireside? Wow, that was like my, yeah. one of my favorite movies. Dude, he's, it was great. He's awesome. It's just like that sometimes it will backfire and I don't show that stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I ended up editing that clip to make These it look like he rules. liked me. Like I put a smile in it for my social because he was just like, no, no, no. I'm like, you're wearing a cape, dude. You're like, dude, seriously, how many takes did it take to chuck that lime yeah. at the back of Mrs. Doubtfire's head? <laughs> yeah. And you're like... These are rules. Yeah, yeah. Are you really allergic to seafood? Everyone, you choked on that. I remember that. Are you really allergic or? 
This was is that serious. really your Mercedes? This is serious. Image? I also, I think I pissed him off. As I said, he was like my dad fashion icon. Like, uh, you, the yeah. way you dress with your kids, how I want to be in jeans. You yeah, know, like but I, that's, was, I don't know if that would piss me off. Could that's have been like, an English thing, man. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Back in his day. God, you, gorgeous. I don't know if I could get through all that with all the hair, though. I'd have to, like, weed whack it or well, something. Well, you're talking to a guy who's covered right now, but I'm a, I'm a poor man's uh, Robin Williams <laughs> Uh, in the hair department, yeah. My dad looks like a gorilla, actually. Does he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky because I like I have I'm like a little bit thinner than him in terms of hair. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. You know, I paint my hair on too for television. All right, now you're really getting to know me. Do you really? Yeah, I have to. Why? In the front. Where? Just here. No. Dude, there's lights. I'm on camera a lot. You what know, this you is the, the the journey of a there's white no, man in Hollywood. No yeah. What are you talking about? It's Fibers? like it's root concealer. Shut up. You, it's great. What? One day I'm gonna get like peacock surgery in L. in I L. A. I couldn't even. I was just like, big, I'm gonna get big peacock surgery. <laughs> Kids, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to. When we wrap, I'm gonna have to look and go. I'm taking foot. I can't. Well, talk. you know, I'm telling you, it's raining and I'm insecure about it. I'm like one. I'm one <laughs> rain puddle away from being just, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> just. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a legitimate fear of mine. Like really? losing my hair, and I think my I wife was losing mine bad. And I just started taking the medication. Shit grew back. What are you so, taking? Just uh, keeps. What, what keeps is it's are they uh, paying finasteride. For this? Are they paying for this? No, they're not finasteride. Just one pill. What is that? It's a uh, it's a uh, to regrow your hair. Finasteride. Fina finasteride. Sounds like something to grow Fina my grass. Finasteride. Yeah, it's right next to the Roundup. <laughs> that way, when you get cancer, Bay, you can just sue Bayer because they own that. Exactly, it's all no, the same. No, uh, no, I was losing it back because my my identical twin brother he died a little over a year ago. That's right. Sorry, we had for the that. same hairline, but his was like get, like he he had like the horseshoe and like I started just uh, all my you stuff. Look great, dude. I always had a big forehead, but like, dude, was but that's the, a good hairline, right? It there, was dude. going it was going back so bad. Whoa! And then it just started one pill a day. Junk still works. I've had no side effects. I will say when I first started taking it, I was in my old studio. I had a wooden stool that I sat on. What? And your ass would fall asleep. Yeah. Like, because, you know, I'd be in the booth and I'd sit there and edit. My ass fell asleep and my balls and just all my junk fell asleep. And I thought it was a side effect of the. Fin and I literally went, oh, I'm fucking dying. I'm dying. So I text my wife, I go, Anya. And I was literally, I was crying. I go, Yeah. I don't, I can't win. What is going like? She's like, what are you talking about? I can't feel my dick. Like, and she's like, I was like, I think it's doing something to it. I'm like, and I'm like, oh, we have two kids and that's fine. I'm glad. Yeah. And then she's like, wait a second. Like, and then I started like, try to go pee. Everything started getting pins and needles. I'm oh, like, like, asshole. Oh. I fell asleep. Like when you're on the toilet and then you get up, you're like, huh. Oh. And then I just try to lift one leg and just wait, <laughs> wait for the pain to go away. Like, I, I couldn't. I, oh. I never knew that could fall asleep. That's good to know that it yeah. could be that if I ever have an You're on the wooden stool, so like your yeah. ass cheeks are falling. But then like everything's resting on there, and I go, oh. And I'm like, you're going to pee. I'm like, I can't feel it. I can't, I can't feel it. That's, that's I, scary. Yeah. We're, ta we're touching on my two fears, though, like from like when I was younger. My yeah. two fears in life were always I was going to lose my hair and yeah. I would be infertile. Okay. Now I have two kids and I'm thinning. So one of them's fine. I can't like. What do you like? So I'm not you, looking for if compliments. You, if you got out of the shower, it would be bad. Uh it's not that it's bad. It's just, just paranoid. That it looks like if you ever you ever been to Puerto Rico and you've seen those dogs with mange. <laughs> My dogs are from Puerto Rico, <laughs> and they had mange. When we got there, and they were just totally yeah. I got sato. What so an odd like, specific to nail with you. And literally, my dogs they had mange, and then. I'm like, Paul, dude, you can literally just, my dog's name is Paul. For, no, it's no, not. That would be, be crazy. Be, um, no, uh, <laughs> like, that's how I feel like. It's not patchy, but it's like got, you get, it looks like you'd use a little miracle Grow a little bit in there. Like it's a little bit thinner strands. Is it a pen was. or is it a powder? Is it a? It's a spray. My scalp is as black as the night. Okay. Black Adam scalp. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got to start talking about this more because, you know, the thing about comedy and you podcasts, gotta you got to be vulnerable. Man. Dude. But this doesn't work on stage because to your point, if you talk about insecurity and no one sees it, no one's going to believe. Right. Like I see a kid who just Well, you could say, well, I just I, I sprayed stuff in my hair. Yeah. I got to start talking about it like that. Jokes. Take an eyebrow transplant. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's right. Yeah. Eugene Levy eyebrows and just, you know. I'm going to go to Hollywood and get a surgery. It's from my ass to my scalp. It's going to be great. I was contemplating surgery when it was bad and I went. I don't think I'd do it though. You're selling it though, but the thing about pills and pharmaceuticals is it freaks. Like I don't take anything. I don't. That's the only thing I take. That's the so only that's interesting. Thing. I'm gonna look this up. And I mean, I've had no side effects. Wild. It was a prostate medication, and oh, then that the can't side hurt effect now anyway. was hair growth. That's interesting. So 
I started taking it. It's dude, it's it's seventy five bucks every three months. Wow. It gets shipped to your house. Twenty five bucks a month. We don't have a sponsor for the podcast, but they should sponsor you on your TikTok and then you can uh, send them to my address. I would gladly do it. It it was a game changer. That's crazy. Like I never really cared about my appearance, but like I saw I just it was like my identical twin brother is like losing his Yeah. I'm like, ugh. I don't want to look like him. Yeah. Now I'm like, I you know, you miss him and you go, I, I'd take that back. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, of but course. like, at the same time, it's just like, no, man, I I, I'm, I, I own it. I'm like, I'm not, because my cousin's like, at my brother's funeral, my cousin goes, did you get plugs? <laughs> I went, Jimmy, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you got plugs, didn't you? I go, no. He goes, why is your hair look different? I'm going to start taking medication. He goes, get out of it. I go, dude, started taking, he goes, all right, finally stop wow. doing that. Dude, it looks good. So it's like it's you know starts to work. You're like, oh yeah, buddy. You, you say you never care, but it, for men, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It's it's a it's a phase of life that I think starts to dwindle. Like I said, I said this before. You either yeah. go Jason Statham, yep. or Jason Alexander. So two options. I'm gonna let myself go and eat and drink, or I'm gonna go to the gym. The Statham is good because oh, like yeah. I'm lucky. Like when I buzz my head, I get a perfect shaped dome. Nice. So it's like. I could do it. But then it's like, I I do feel like dudes who are bald look better with scruff on their face. You have to. It just looks cool. What if you can't grow it? Like you're a Polish guy or something. Yeah. Then you're like. My buddy's Albanian. And he can't grow a single hair on his face. Really? Yeah. If I, it sounds like your career goal was like, you know, making a, a obviously f- supporting your family, but then making like a really great home studio. Yeah. Mine is getting really good hair surgery. And that's it? That's it. Like I want to get big, I want to get a big enough gig in Hollywood that you can just, just do like 50 grand on my head. You can go to Turkey. Turkey's got, I had a buddy who came back from Turkey and he had a perfect transplant. Really? Like, it, it sounds sketch. I, I didn't see him in a long time, for a long time. I got, dude, what the, and he showed me, you can't tell it's a transplant. I got another buddy who has like the hair system. I never knew until we went over his house, and he's like, I go, what the hell? What is good? He goes, dude, I've, I've had a system. I go, what do you mean a system? It's like a toothpick, it's like a f- but you can see scalp through it. Oh, I don't no, get no, it. No, it's no, amazing. No, no, no. I it have looks a guy so has, real. I have a buddy I knew as a toupee who I guess it might have been surgically sewn onto his head, and it looks bad. exactly how it sounds. It oh, looks I, bad. Like... But a fake hair, like because the, the line is so good, it's like right above. It's, in my mind, it's like right above his eyebrow. Oh, so yeah, it it's can't like be that. so can't pronounced. Be that. Like, so I'm like, dude, you gotta have going a little bit of the here? widow's peak. But like, he's pulling on it. And I'm going, I don't see where it starts, and then he starts taking this like it's almost like a like a long, like a like almost like a fro pick. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's just one, and he's and he starts pulling up the hairline. I go, get out of here. Yeah, it is like you're also bit, borrowing trouble doing a party trick with that. Like if you're like, look, you know, like. It's gonna come off. Well, there's a dude. There's a video. He's on a date. and He takes his sweatshirt off, and it comes off from the back, and he can't tell. And she's like, "Jesus Christ!" It's funny. Are you making me think of? Uh, I I did uh, interview John Travolta a few yeah. years ago, and we were backstage at an event. I was interviewing people, and the guy's hair was clearly fake, but like he looked cool too. Yeah, he pulled. Feel- like he was one of those guys. I'm glad he just buzzes it now. He yeah. looks so good. But he know. But but, but everyone pulled, knew it was fake and it, and it was still fine. Anyways. So that's also my goal. It's like I might go fake and people go look at that fake toupee. But at the end of the day, you gotta go. Like if I was in that position and I could do that, you can't. Like when I was young, I used to make fun of people. Then you get older, you go, Nah, man. He feels good about it. You're doing do doing you. It. Yeah, you do Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, you, the, you 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 weed out the as you get older perspective shifts. Being a parent, right? You don't need to make fun of. I like making light of people, but yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you don't have to since I've put had them kids, down. It, it forces me to go. All right, all right. What can I say in front of them? What can I say? Yeah. Them? You know. So I got to be careful, like doing comedy so much, because I'll get home and I'll feel hot, and I'll be like hot takes with the world in front of my daughter, and my wife's like, "You're not on stage. Stop." Because I'm like saying crazy. I'm not political in stand up, yep. but like I will still say dumb things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, there's a fear that she'll learn that like that's the opinion of life. I guess yeah. it's a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, you got to be able to say what you want and be funny and not like, because I always tell the kids, if you hear me swear, you hear me, don't repeat what I, and then of course I'm in the other room and I hear my, <laughs> I hear my son, Audrey, shut the F up. And I went, <laughs> It's awesome. I just <laughs> went right into the living room. I just pointed upstairs. I go, I'll come get you. I'll talk to you. And I go, dude, you can't say that to your sister. Are you able to turn on dad mode like that when you have yeah. to? Oh, like yeah. you're, you're stern. Well, you ask. You ask my wife. I'm. Um, um, I say it once, nice. I say it a second time, nice ish. Third time, it's nuclear. Nice. I lose my. Hand. And then, but it's like 
But I'm like, I've gotten a lot better in the past couple of years. Like, I have a lot more patience. I'm, I'm at the point where I'm just talking to my kids and going, listen, I want to be around as long as I can. You guys got to work with me. I love you to death, but you got to, like, if we're asking you to do something, please just do it. I don't, yeah. you know, and then you kind of, and then it's all, it's helped me a lot. Kneel down and get on their yeah, level. Yeah, and be. It has helped me because, like, when I get down on their level, I'm talking to their face. I'm not just talking in their direction, and that 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 has helped me so much. It's also our generation. I feel like we're probably similar ages, but like, yeah. there's such conscious. There's a lot of good stuff to that as well. Like yeah. being emotional, let letting their emotions be validated, all this stuff, right? But I didn't grow up like that no. in the '90s, '80s, '90s. You know what I mean? Never like seatbelts in the car. Like <laughs> I should get hit for no. Like I didn't do anything. My mother used to break wooden spoons off my hand. Oh. But like not in a malicious way. Looking right. back, like just you just did it. It was like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. but now you can't you can't even do that. And I'm like, and that wasn't even that bad. Like, it, your kids don't abuse them, mm -hmm. but you, you got to put a little bit of fear in them. And kids like, need a little bit, need a law. We can't get to a place where there's no. You got to lay down the law, and the do. kids will. You know, you see kids and parents if they like they let the kids run the show. It's like no, no. I go straight old school Jersey gangster if I have to. It's like to a point where it's I'm bribing my daughter with cash, and then yep. I also I'm holding a baseball bat. It's like two things. Please, sweetheart. I won't please. hit you with it, but go. <laughs> just yeah, just to see. I I always do that to my son. I go okay. <laughs> I don't. I won't touch him. I won't lay a hand on him. I just go like that. And he just he sees my face. He's like oh go go go. <laughs> don't. And he's like when it, he wants to walk by me, I'm going. Don't do anything to me. <laughs> and I just go like that, blah, 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 up the stairs. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never do that. Um, no, I really appreciate you coming to Hangman in Love the me. rain. It's been so cool to hang with you and make me feel like a kid pranking fancy restaurants. I told, I almost forgot we just did that. That's it was so the fun. best. I'm having a great time, so thank you for having Dude, me, Dude, thanks for being here. Make sure you check out Joe everywhere he is, guys. I want to make sure everyone I follows Joe you. I am Dead on all the socials. He's incredible on socials, incredible here. Thank you guys for listening, subscribing, watching. We'll be back next time. It is me. It's me. I am here. <laughs>